thank you for joining us again. Uh, we're spending time in Romans 12. Um, in this chapter, Paul lays out how he expects followers of Jesus to respond to the gospel. We are receivers, benefactors of the stunning mercy of God. Um, but for Paul, if we've really grasped that, if we've really received the riches that God has blessed us with through the gospel um, of Jesus, then it's got to change us. It's got to be um, demonstrated in a, in, a, in a new life, a new way of living. Yesterday we heard about that call for us to have a way of thinking transformed by God. Uh, for us not to be controlled by the surrounding pervading culture of our day, uh, but to take those glasses off and to, to see the world with kingdom glasses. Um, not to be um, seeing the world as, as consumers, but instead to, to see the world like Christ with a servant heart and a godlike view and understanding of the world around us. Well, we're going to carry on reading Romans 12. I'm going to read verses 3 through to 8 today. Romans 12, 3 to 8. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is encourage, if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. It's a really strange time for our country, isn't it? And of course, Equally a strange time for all of us and a strange time for us as a members of a, of a church. We found it relatively easy at the beginning of this pandemic to shut things down. Um, very few decisions to make. We obeyed our, our, our leaders in this country and, and shut things down and, and did what we could. But the opening up, of course, is much more difficult. And we're coming to a time when pretty much the government has said, you know, use your own wisdom. And everyone has had very different experiences in the last 18 months. Some of our, our community have been frontline workers every day. They've been out with people um, serving us in, and, and getting on with life, albeit wearing masks. Others of us have been shut away, isolating. But we've all had our lives curbed and our freedoms reduced in this time in some way or another. And we're all coming out of it in different ways. Some of us, I guess, can't wait for the freedoms. Um, others, because of the new freedoms, actually might be retreating back into isolation, waiting to see how things are gonna work out. While Paul, in this letter, in this chapter, makes it clear that as recipients of grace and mercy of God, we belong to each other. That's the reality. Um, we, when we accept Jesus as, as our saviour, we are grafted into his family. We belong to one another through faith. Whatever our views or our experiences, whatever our gifts, we belong to each other. Humble unity is vital for us at any time. But I guess particularly at this time that we're heading into, we desperately need God's grace and help for us as a community of faith to show that humble unity now. We need each other going forward. And to maintain our unity, that means that we're going to have to listen to each other. We're going to have to seek to understand each other. We're going to have to be quick to forgive, slow to take offence. And as we continue to return, we're going to need each other's gifts. None of us can say that we are not needed. If God has called us to this church, we are needed. We're part of it. We have something unique to offer. God has called us to this place, this time, 
for a reason, to play a role to serve in humility and unity and love. As we look at perhaps September, um, we're really at the moment heading for life returning to some kind of normality in our schools. There won't be any more bubbles. Um, the freedoms by then will be in place. And, and I guess church life will be the same. More and more groups will be coming back. Life will return. And as we seek to serve the kingdom here together, as we seek to uh, be missional disciples together, we've been talking a lot about that, haven't we? We're going to need people to return, to step up, to give time, bring their skills if we're going to see Christ's kingdom continue to grow. The chapter 12 started with, therefore, in view of God's mercy. Well, in view of God's mercy, particularly at this strange time for our nation, for our church, for our families, we need to play our part in this community of faith. And we need to do so with humility, with patience, with love, with unity. I'm going to finish today by again just reading part of the message from the, uh, the chapter 12 we've, we've read today. I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me, and especially as I have responsibilities in relationship to you. Living then, as every one of you does, in pure grace, it's important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. In this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvellously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be, without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we're not. If you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help, don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourselves get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. Well, may we be the unified body of Christ in this place. And not for ourselves, but for the world around us. May God bless us with this. Yeah.